Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to stabilize your shaky footage with the Warp Stabilizer tool. So before we begin this tutorial, I just want to say if you're not following me on Instagram and Twitter, go follow me at Justin Odisho. I love connecting with more of you guys on there. It's a lot easier to talk with in DMs, communicate, and I like live streaming and things like that. So I have a couple of shaky clips here on the timeline taken from my last vlog. But as you can see, the clip is kind of shaky. The car was moving and I didn't really have any stabilizers or grips with me. So although you want to get it as best as you can in camera, there's actually a great tool in Premiere Pro called the Warp Stabilizer that lets you smooth out some of that shakiness where you don't want it. So if we head over to the effects panel on the right hand side and search for Warp Stabilizer, you should find it in the distort folder in the video effects folder. So you can click and drag this on to individual clips and you'll see that it'll automatically begin analyzing. So this is just going to go through each frame. It might take a couple seconds and then it's going to give you its default result. But there's a few things we can adjust in the meanwhile depending on the type of result we want to get. So keep in mind a handheld look is a stylistic choice. In this case, although I'm shooting handheld, the car is just kind of bumpy and it's not really an intentional or stylistic choice. So let's take a look at what Warp Stabilizer did by default on this clip. You can see it's done a decent job and this type of clip is probably the perfect example for the amount of shakiness that Warp Stabilizer is good at getting rid of. But one thing you can also see is that it's cropped into the clip a little bit and that's something you have to keep in mind. In order to stabilize the clip it's using a little bit of zoom and crop so that it can use things like the position and rotation and perspective to fix your clip. So if there's important elements on the side or you know you're going to have to end up using warp stabilizer in post processing, you might want to shoot a little bit wider angle. Now although this was a pretty good example, not always is the default going to look good. Sometimes it's going to look really wonky and warpy and that's because of some of the different adjustments that we can do. There's always going to be a little bit of a trade-off if the clip's not perfect and the better you can get it in camera, the easier time you'll have. But in the effects control panel, you should see the smoothness adjustment and also the method. So if we drop down this method menu, there's four different methods and each of them gets more and more basic. So subspace warp is the default and this will allow Premiere to perspective warp and warp individual parts of your clip along with the position, scale, and rotation but each one that you step down kind of removes an element. So it kind of goes from 4D to 3D-ish to 2D to one-dimensional adjustments. But you can always experiment with lessening the smoothness. So the less smoothness you try to introduce to the clip, the less warping and jello-y look that you might get in the end, which might work well if you only need a little bit of extra smoothness and don't mind some of the handheld movement. Also, if you head over to the advanced section, there's a crop less, smooth more, which means you can lower it to crop it less, basically lower the strength of the effect, and that'll zoom out, but it'll be more shaky. Or you can increase it to increase the smoothness effect, and that will keep it more smooth, but then you might get some of that jello-y looking warp. There's also one more important adjustment that you can make is the result. By default, it's smooth motion, which is great for when you're actually moving or walking. However, you can also choose to result in no motion, which is kind of going to try to replicate a tripod shot. Now, for this moving shot, no motion isn't what we want because it's moving and things get all weird when you try to do a no motion shot. But let's take this shot, for example. This is a handheld shot. However, you can see there's a slight amount of movement and we can make it look like a perfectly still tripod shot if we add the warp stabilizer on here, except for the result, make it no motion, which will just eliminate any motion to make it look completely stable, which is great when that's what you're going for in the first place. One last thing we haven't touched on is the framing options. By default, it's stabilized crop and auto scale, which means that it will crop into your image and scale it so that you don't see any of the edges. But if for some reason in certain cases, you only wanted it to stabilize, then you could set that adjustment. However, you're gonna see when I play the clip here, you're gonna to start to see all the edges happening because it's not zooming in to make up for that. However, this can be a good way to see exactly how much fixing Premiere is trying to do and kind of allow you to see what's going on before the crop. So those are the basics of how to stabilize your footage in Premiere Pro with the Warp Stabilizer tool. 
Remember, play around with the smoothness and the crop less, smooth more to get the strength just right so you have as little jello-y warping as possible and as smoother as you can get your clip to be without looking warped. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, then definitely leave a like on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments and make sure you subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to stay tuned for all of my new future videos. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.